Let us talk about the exact method now of injecting ischemic territory urgently. To do this, we need the 600 unit per mil concentration of hyaluronidase. To make this up, please refer to the practical demonstration at the end of this video. Once we have our one mil syringe replete with 600 units of hyalase, we need to make several 0.1 mil injection boluses and infiltrate these around the ischemic territory. You'll be able to see a diagram that illustrates various different sizes of ischemic territory and roughly how much hyaluronidase to inject in this type of surface area of ischemic territory. It varies from 500 to 2000 units depending on the surface area of the territory. The larger the surface area, the larger the infiltration. So if we try and take our ischemic surface area, divide it roughly into an even grid pattern, and in each of the points within this grid, inject 0.1 mils of the 600 unit per mil solution, we're making a good start. Now effectively, once that is done, obviously for the next hour, we will monitor how things are changing in the patient. If things seem to be improving, good. But the likelihood is we will follow the initial injection an hour later with the same pattern of injection. And keep doing this until normal tissue perfusion and appearance are restored. Test injections of hyaluronidase are only necessary in non-urgent situations of filler complication management. Mercifully, the incidence of hypersensitivity reaction to hyaluronidase is extremely low and is in the order of 0.1%. Many suggestions have been made with doses for testing. These vary in the region of two units to 20 units. However, there is a body of evidence that suggests that units in the range of two to five may be too low to elicit a reaction. My preference in these situations is to test pouch with 15 to 30 units in the dorsum of the hand. A positive reaction to a test pouch is seen when erythema, a wheel, and itching begin to develop. To help illustrate this, I have included some photos from a patient that I treated with a hyaluronidase test patch back in November 2013. As you will see from the photos, there are two photos, one taken shortly after the test injection and another taken roughly half an hour after the test injection, and here you can see an evolution of a type 1 hypersensitivity reaction that would contraindicate us injecting hyaluronidase in this patient for a non-urgent complication of filler. One thing to finally remember is that bee sting allergy is sometimes an indicator for whether someone may potentially develop a hypersensitivity reaction to hyaluronidase, as hyaluronidase is a very large component of bee venom. So bear that in mind. It is worth asking that question in the same way we used to ask the question of shellfish allergy in people that we may be suspecting of iodine allergies. So in summary, we can say that if we are attempting to dissolve filler in non-urgent cases, that 
15 to 30 units of hyaluronidase injected for every 0.1 mil of hyaluronic acid filler would seem to be a, a very reasonable start point in terms of balancing safety and getting the job done when it comes to dissolving the filler, but not perhaps over treating. Secondly, when it comes to urgent cases, well, <clears throat> if we're dealing with skin necrosis, then, or sorry, vascular occlusion in the skin, that dissolving with high concentrations of hyaluronidase in a flooding technique is the best way forward, rather than trying to attempt to inject intra-arterially. Effectively, if we're using a high dose pulse protocol, this may result in several thousand units of hyaluronidase being injected over the course of four or five hours following the ischemic event. Um, but, you know, there is little evidence to suggest that that is uh, causing any problems in the long term from cases where it has been performed. In terms of how much hyaluronidase to use in urgent situations, well, I'd probably uh, start with a concentration of 500 or 600 units per mil, and uh, depending on the territory, uh, infiltrate uh, the full 500 units uh, around the area of ischemia. And if it was a larger area of ischemia, for example, not just a lip, but uh, the upper lip, the nasolabial area, and around the nose itself, for example, we may choose to in, in, infiltrate closer to even a thousand or a thousand five hundred units in any single pass. So here we have a box of 10 vials of hyaluronidase. This is how it's delivered to us at the clinic. This is the hyaluronidase that uh, if you look up in the BNF, uh, you will see the Volkhart uh, 10 vial pack of hyaluronidase. There is um, 1,500 units per vial. This is presented in a small ampule. Um, the hyaluronidase, as you can see, comes as a freeze-dried powder. Uh, that is ready for reconstitution with the expiry date and the um, batch number on the back there. So, the hyaluronidase here is of ovine origin. What we will do now is prepare three different concentrations of hyaluronidase. The reason why I'm showing three different concentrations of hyaluronidase is as follows. In my practice, I would normally, if correcting a small excess of filler, use a concentration of 150 units per mil of hyaluronidase and small boluses of that concentration, such as 15 to 30 units, to remove small amounts of filler. On average, I would use 15 to 30 units of hyaluronidase to dissolve 0.1 mil of hyaluronic acid filling. And for small corrections like this, a dose, sorry, a concentration of 150 units per mil would suffice. Where I might decide to completely dissolve away a correction that has been performed and then reperform that correction two weeks later, I would probably use closer to a 300 unit per mil concentration of hyaluronic acid. So I will also be showing you how I make that up. Finally, for emergency situations such as vascular occlusion uh, or impending necrosis type problems, um, I would use a 600 unit per mil concentration. Now, the idea behind that is where we have uh, a bolus of filler blocking a vessel, we're not usually exactly sure whereabouts in that vessel the bolus is. Neither are we sure exactly where the vessel might run due to anatomical variation in individuals. Now, in these scenarios, 
we have to rely on a high perivascular concentration of hyaluronidase to help us get rid of that blockage. And in these situations, infiltrating around the territory of the vessel with multiple boluses of hyaluronidase from a high concentration syringe, such as 600 units per mil, makes sense. So, that, for that reason, I will show you how to make a 600 unit per mil hyaluronidase um, syringe as well. So, firstly, I'm going to start by taking my vial of 1,500 units of hyaluronidase and an ampule of 0.9% sodium chloride, which I've already opened. You can use bacteriostatic saline as well, but normal saline is what we have here, and that is also fine for use. So, literally, I will open the ampule. Let's place that on the side one second. And we shall draw back one mil of the normal saline. Make sure I've got no bubbles. Okay. A little bit more just to make this up to one mil. Fine. Then proceed to place that one mil of solution into oop, the vial. So effectively now what we have is one mil of saline containing 1,500 units of hyaluronidase. So we'll just agitate that slightly and allow that to dissolve. And now what we will do is pull back 0 0.1 mils of the solution. So we now have, as you can see, 0 0.1 mils of that solution, which means I have a total of 150 units now in this syringe. In order to complete the procedure, I make this back up to one mil. So by process deduction, we have now 150 units of hyaluronidase in one mil. I shall now place this here. And as you can see in summary, we have hyaluronidase, or hyaluronidase, 150 units per mil. And the use of this should be a non-urgent, careful removal of small amounts of filler, and a test injection should be performed. The test injection is useful in non-urgent cases of hyaluronidase administration. So for removal of small amounts of hyaluronidase or dissolving of an area for a redo of a procedure. If a test injection is to be performed, a small amount, perhaps 15 units of the hyaluronidase should be injected into the dorsum of the hand and then one should wait for about 15 minutes to 30 minutes. If at the end of this time, a red raised wheel is seen at the site of injection, and that also presents with a sort of irritation itching around the area, then what you have is a positive result, and effectively injection of hyalase into this particular patient could result in a type 1 hypersensitive reaction, which is dangerous and life-threatening, i.e. they may become anaphylactic, and that is a life-threatening situation. Obviously, in an urgent situation where impending necrosis might be the problem, then it is reasonable to inject without a test patch of the hyalase, as the reason for doing so is an a matter of urgency to protect the integrity of tissue and the low risk of allergy or anaphylaxis is acceptable. Now, 
What we will do is continue to make the slightly higher concentration solution here now, which is the 300 units per mil solution. And quite simply, all I've done here now is draw back 0.2 mils of my hyaluronidase solution in the ampule. This now contains 300 units of hyaluronidase. To complete the solution, again, just make this up to 1 mil with 0.8 mils of normal saline, and we now have a 300 unit per mil syringe. And this can be used for injection of non-urgent, more comprehensive removal of filler, as I said, before a complete redo of an area. Test injection again should be performed because this is a non-urgent indication. Finally, we're going to make the 600 mil, sorry, 600 unit per mil solution. And this should be done by taking 0.4 mils of the hyaluronidase solution and making this up to 1 mil using 0.6 mils of the saline such that we have now 600 units in one mil. So the 600 unit per mil concentration can then be used for urgent situations where there is a vascular occlusion or ischemia, impending necrosis, all these types of situations are appropriate for the 600 unit per mil concentration and don't bother testing in my view get on with it and literally the quicker it is done the more tissue will be saved perfect for those of you who know me you know very well that i can ramble on about cosmetic dermatology topics for a long time so thank you very much for having spent the last half an hour or so listening to me. I hope it has helped you to consolidate your knowledge about hyaluronidase and management of filler complications. Please do send in comments and suggestions and feedback to help me make these tutorials more valuable for you. And I'm very much looking forward to our next instalment on our next exciting topic. So. Any suggestions on what you would really like me to talk about will be very much appreciated. Thank you very much.